Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. Welcome to Three Buck Theater. And this is my RT recap series, where I like to take a look at Rotten Tomato scores, oftentimes as soon as the movie drops, because I feel it gives us the best representation of the fan media response. Obviously, I'll be doing an aftermath of this on Sunday or Monday to get a good look at the change score from 97% right now, whether it goes up or goes down, we don't quite know yet. And also what the audience is saying uh, on top of all the other little factors that go into a film's opening. So Avengers Endgame is a movie that we've all been waiting for. It is the culmination of 11 years. It is 22nd film in the franchise. Kevin Feige has absolutely positively built a massive, massive brand loyalty. And this is looking to be a near $300 million opening weekend film and potentially a $3 billion movie. But what are the critics saying about it? Well, let's take a look here at the general critical consensus. At 97%, at 72 reviews counted, it says exciting, entertaining, and emotionally impactful. Avengers Endgame does whatever it takes to deliver a satisfying finale to Marvel's epic Infinity Saga. And it's weird to think that the Infinity Saga started really <laughs> back in 2011. It really did. But we could even go as far back as uh, 2008. But it's crazy to think it's come this far, and it's crazy to think that it's almost over. Just two more days, two more days, and the rest of us here in the States will be able to see it. People overseas are able to see it right now, you lucky bastards, but keep the spoilers to a minimum. So jumping down here, it says that the grave course of events set in motion by Thanos that wiped out half the universe and fractured the Avengers ranks compels the remaining Avengers to take one final stand in Marvel Studios' grand conclusion to 22 films, Avengers Endgame, currently rated PG-13 uh, and running in at about a three hour and one minute runtime. But here's what the, critic the critics are saying about Avengers Endgame. And this is coming in from just what you see from the front page going in right now. Mara Reinstein from Us Weekly gives it a fresh review saying directors Anthony and Joe Russo have somehow crafted a coherent and exhilarating epic that incorporates all your favorite superheroes and many of their loved ones in an emotionally resonant package. Again, they don't want to come out and say, but to me, that says time travel. I said that last night during the reaction breakdown video that I had. Uh, I think time travel is going to play a big part in it. Mark uh, Dan Danielle from Toronto Sun with a fresh rating says, we haven't seen anything like this before in a franchise movie making. One can only hope that the next 10 years of Marvel storytelling comes close to this. Although if you listen to some fans out there, they're going to argue that Endgame is kind of the end of it. And anything next that Marvel brings to the table is not going to be anywhere near as good. But here, I mean, as we've learned at this point in time, uh, don't bet against Feige. So that could be anything here. Um, Eric Cohn from IndieWire with a positive rating says, As Endgame sputters to the finish line, it leaves the impression of witnessing a Marvel movie marathon compressed to three hours and 58 seconds. But trust me, they're disposable of unbridled fan service. And I've been seeing that a little bit from some of the reactions last night. And some of the things, not just this, but other things I've seen around the internet, that apparently fan service is a bad thing. Fan service isn't a bad thing. Like I said last night, if you make a sequel, you're technically in the business of fan service. You have to keep the fans coming back and giving them what they want, while also still trying to break some new ground. This breaks new ground and still is going to give people a lot of what they want. Uh, Jack, Jake Coyle here from the AP says more than any of the, those franchises, Endgame at its best moments carries the thrill of classic comic book twists and reveals. And there's always that old adage, that old joke. No one's ever really dead in the comics, you know, and nothing is ever permanent in comics. They can always go back and find a way to fix it. And that, I think, is what a lot of Endgame is. I mean, my own personal theories surrounding Endgame have been saying time travel and reversal of a lot of the aspects of what's gone on in order to probably fracture it and create a new timeline similar to, like, you know, alternate 1985 from Back to the Future 2. I've kind of been talking about that for a while, that I do view Avengers Endgame as being Back to the Future 2 with the alternate 1985 seeking for is what they're seeking to, uh, you know, return from. Uh, but we got a, a, a rotten review here from Barry Hertz from Globe and Mail saying the entire endeavor loses any sense of emotional stakes or general meaning beyond the deliverance of crass fan service and incomprehensible visuals. That's a hell of a thing. Um, 
Barry, I really hope your Twitter mentions are locked down, sir. You're going to be getting a lot of negative and a lot of negative responses for this one. But it is one of those things where if you look at what he says here, um, it, it, it loses any sense of emotional stakes and general meaning beyond the deliverance of crass fan service, which makes me wonder what the crass fan service is. Is that going to be one of those elements where it's it's so in your face, you start rolling your eyes like, oh, they wow, they'll go. They reference that. OK, is it too much playing to the past? But then again, time travel is going to be an element here. So obviously that could be happening. But the emotional stakes part is is intriguing to me, mostly because, uh, you know, looking at the end of Infinity War and knowing Spider-Man Far From Home is on the horizon, Black Panther 2 is on the horizon, Doctor Strange 2 is on the horizon. It does kind of remove any emotional stakes. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, these things are all movies that we know are happening so it does really appear that they, you know, that the deaths aren't permanent unless they are done in a way that is going to be wildly, vastly different. But I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, Brian Truitt from USA Today says, if the Marvel superhero movies on the whole are your favorite band's individual albums, Avengers Endgame is the triple disc greatest hits package with the real awesome cover and the slew of familiar comforting gems inside. And again, that makes a lot of sense, right? Going back, playing it a little bit on the safe side, uh, still trying to finish out the story, but we all know there's nothing really at risk, which I think based upon all the, the hoopla and jargon we heard coming out of the Marvel camp saying, no, 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 we really, we really mean it, you guys. There's bad things on the horizon here. Um, Victor Stiff from That Shelf says, this is blockbuster filmmaking of the highest order. Avengers Endgame is a culmination of a decade's worth of stories, character growth, and audience investment. And that pretty straightforward. There's really nothing more to read into that. We already kind of know that, and it's good to have it repeated back to us. Uh, Dominic Suzanne Mayer from Consequence of Sound says, as it unfolds, the film invites you to forget about what you came in deciding it would be. Interesting. I wonder what he went into it thinking it would be. I mean, a lot of the other reviews have made it kind of abundantly clear what it would be. A lot of the other early reactions last night made it kind of abundantly clear what it would be. So I really wonder what he thought it would be. That's fascinating to me. Uh, Rebecca Murray from Showbiz Junkie says, the most impressive aspect of what's sure to be the biggest blockbuster in history is how intimate and personal so much of the story is and how quieter the character moments aren't lost in the shuffle. And I think at the end of the day, that's what fans really wanted. Based upon the initial trailers showing us the aftermath, of the snap, the aftermath of Thanos's actions, the aftermath of everything, and looking at the individual character responses to it with Captain shaving, you know, Cap shaving his beard and going uh, to uh, a help group, Scarlett Johansson or Black Widow growing out her hair and then getting wanting to get vengeance, Hawkeye becoming Ronin and going on a murder spree through, through Tokyo. We see these things play out and we see these characters dealing with the response of what happened. Now, I don't know how much of that is true or how much of that is real. Maybe that's what Dominic here is referring to. The uh, The marketing was so vastly different from what the movie itself was. But I do think that the character moments that aren't lost in the shuffle is, is quite telling as to what to expect from the movie. And I'm, I'm very, very excited to see it. Uh, Carl Davenport from Complex says, speeches are given, battles are fought, jokes are thrown, many of them in fact. They pack a lot of funny into this three hours for good or ill. In the end, the satisfaction of having stayed the course with Marvel is rewarded tenfold. That's, I think, what a lot of us are expecting, that this movie is, is a beast of a film. It's an absolute beast of a movie. But in the end, you're going to walk out going, yeah, it was worth it, man. That was, that was 11 years I spent engaged in this franchise, 11 years I spent loving all of these movies and getting involved and going to the midnight shows or the early screenings, talking about it with friends and colleagues and relatives and loved ones, being sure to be there for all the movies releases on home video, constantly digesting any new piece of information. And at the end of it, at the end of the day, at the end of it all, you're rewarded tenfold. I, I find honestly calls comment here probably be the most comforting with Travis Hopkin or Hopson from Punch Drunk Critic saying, Marvel has built up an incredible amount of emotional currency and Endgame is a very satisfying payoff. There's a lot of emotional currency there. And I think that's why people are going to go back. Like I said, Kevin Feige has established an insane brand loyalty. And the loyalty is not just to the Marvel universe, but to the characters and the actors who portray them. And finally here, Jeffrey Lyles from Lyles Movie Files saying, delivers on all fronts with the most satisfying final acts I have ever seen. This was like a Thanos snap to my expectations and then some giving it a straight 10 out of 10. And that's 
Wow. <laughs> that is, that's wild, man. That is definitely wild. But let's take a look here at the other uh, Rotten review. Because there is another Rotten review here. And this is coming from Keith Ulrich of Slant Magazine. Uh, giving it a 1.5 out of 4. Saying, every serious narrative beat in the film is ultimately undercut by pro-formula storytelling or by faux improvised humor. That That is interesting to me, if I'm being honest with you. That to me is interesting because talking about, you know, we know that the emotional resonance of the film uh, is going to be somewhat lost based upon the, the the ending of Infinity War and knowing what's coming on the horizon. That was one of the biggest problems I think Kevin Feige made. I think that was one of the biggest mistakes that Marvel made in regards of leading up to this. They'd already announced other films or we knew other movies were coming. I mean, we knew Far From Home was already in production by the time we saw Infinity War. So when it ended and Spider-Man disappeared, the emotional loss of, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark, while a great line and a great performance by Tom Holland, that emotional resonance was in fact lost on most people because it didn't matter anymore. We knew Spider-Man's going to survive. We know Spider-Man's going to come back and we know he's going to get another damn movie. So that's a bit of a problem right there. That's definitely a thing that they needed to work on. But unfortunately, uh, I think to, uh, to Keith there, it very much was an issue. It very much was something that he probably felt was a bit too much, that they had built up so much and that they ultimately couldn't contain all the secrets. And that did undercut the emotional resonance of the film. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something else here that's, that's not very good. But out of everyone else here, out of the 72 reviews, 97% uh, give it a positive rating. We will have an audience score definitively here in a couple days. I think they're going to keep the audience score shut probably until the film releases in the United States in just 48 hours from now. So I'm really curious to know everyone's thoughts here on this. Do you think that these critics are uh, are pulling their punches or are they telling the truth? Does this make you more excited or less excited? And honestly, where do you stand on it? Let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day. Please be sure to thumbs up the video and subscribe.